Hey, what is up, mortals? It is Trina Duhart here with a new video for you. Welcome to part four of season two of What If Uraraka Was an Electromaster? I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So we begin. A few days ago, in a certain UA dorm, a call was in progress. It's not fair, I want to meet her too. I know, but our schedules aren't lining up at all. Between your work, my UA duties, and Jen's medical appointments, it almost seems impossible. But I promise that you'll meet her. The three of us will have a great day together. That's my goal. Ochaka replied, knowing that even though difficult, she would make it happen no matter what. But is she as cute as you, Coco? Togo then asked, intrigued for the answer. Cuter, way cuter, Baraka proudly stated. You better keep that promise, because if you don't, I'll go see you too when you least expect it! The blood-obsessed chick then exclaimed quite loudly. It was impossible to tell if this was a joke or not. Himiko's head had rolled over to Nailgun's feet, and the Electromaster could barely contain herself. You have Chen in your arms, Ochako. If you lose control, she will get hurt! Keeping it together was now more critical than ever, but seeing her friend's decapitated head was not helping in the slightest. Cat got your tongue, brat. No arrogant quip or short-tempered scream. The traitor was your accomplice, correct? So at least show some emotion, will ya? Mel down her and leave three more beams then and there. She wanted to see something. Uraraka was forced to run and jump to avoid them, but as another was shot her way, she had to kick it with her electricity, redirecting it to go somewhere else. So she can bend them, Yugino confirmed. Uraraka was then heard from behind Ochako. A friend, perhaps the leader of item, pondered. Don't come in here! Get back! Nailgun screamed, turning her head to face whoever was coming this way. Meltdowner laughed. This was just so perfect. She stretched out her hand and calculated the right place to fire. I'm guessing that's your friend, Nailgun. So you better do something about this! Uraraka was left terrified as she witnessed the hag behind her shooting a big beam toward Kendo. No! There was no time to get her out of the way or even bend it away from here. If she were to go into overdrive, the best she could do was get in the way. But what good would that do? The beam would still kill all of them. What if she just left her to die? The thought crossed her mind for just an instant, and she immediately screamed for it to disappear. Itsuka Kendo was her dorm mate, one of Jinsani's friends. No matter what, she had to be saved. She went to overdrive she went and sprinted until she made it right in front of the orange-haired girl, only centimeters separating her back from the electron green blast. Pouring all of her power into her back, she formed a rampaging electric field to cover it, and this stopped the beam momentarily before making it split into many smaller ones that went off in different directions away from the girls. As it stopped, Ochako almost collapsed. It had taken a lot to manage all that just now. Grab my sister and get out of here with the others. Take her to the frog-based doctor. Deku knows where it is. The now almost out of energy Electromaster commanded as she handed her over. She trusted that Class 1B's big sister could get Jinsani to safety. Got it, but what about you? Don't worry about me. I have a date with Miss Death back there. So get going. I'll catch up once I deal with her. After hearing this, Kendo ran off with Jinsani in her grasp. It was the best she could do to help while trusting that Uraraka would take care of the rest. Deal with me, you say? Please. Whoever said that you could even stand up to me, eh? Get off that golden throne and step into reality, brat. This will be it for you. Meltdowner flicked her hair with her hand. She was about to show this high school girl humility. The entire corridor shook as Nailgun's quirk exploded outward. All the contained rage from today was now allowed to surface. The electricity was unstable and destroyed everything in its path. Mugino was even forced to redirect one of the sparks from hitting her similar to how Ochako had redirected her beam earlier. Both their quirks work similarly on a fundamental level. You killed my friend. One that I had a promise with. And now I'll never be able to complete it. The shaky Electromaster began to say, starting to control her emotions. So that's why I will make you suffer. Your actions made me into a liar. And for that, you have to pay. For her life. For all your attempts to kill my sister and my friend and even for Frenda. For all those, I will deliver a punishment worse than any death. So prepare yourself, Meltdowner, because I will no longer hold back. I'm guessing that you're with them. You can come in peacefully, or I'll have to restrain you by force. Jiro warned as she got ready to engage the girl she just came into contact with. I can't fight, so I'll accompany you outside, Sakitsubo responded. 
Huh? Todoroki formed an ice wall that rushed towards New Hanta, but before it made contact, she punched it, breaking it to pieces. That was ultra disappointing, she commented while dodging Kirishima's pathetic attempt at a sneak attack. She kicked him full force right after, setting him into a wall. Seeing that Todoroki's attempts, as well as Kirishima's, weren't doing much, Deku decided to take matters into his own hands. No matter how hard she tried, Mukino could not break through Uraraka's defense. The constant aura-like electricity kept her safe from any attacks. Even her silicon burn had been rendered obsolete against this power. And in the blink of an eye, Meltdown or dodge a sudden stab from Nailgun's new iron sand dagger. But this didn't stop the Electromaster from switching trajectories and aiming upward, slashing away Mugino's right eye. <laughs> she held her red, wet face with both hands and tottered backward. And seeing that, Ochako gave a silent smile. That's just the start! I have so many more things planned for you! With those words, Mugino's face was dyed with rage. Nailgun! A bright beam swelled up as her quirk violently activated. Yugino Shizuri's left arm was blown away from the wrist to the elbow as the pen melted. The many bright beams were aimed at Ochako Uraraka's face. Yugino had shot Meltdowner, ignoring any kind of precise aiming, and this had cost her dearly. Without thought, Nailgun deflected it as she started walking toward her injured foe. Once near her, she sped up and ran to her side, kicking her away to fall into a dark ditch. Perhaps it was meant to be for an elevator that never got installed or maybe it was just a part of an incomplete section of the facility. Regardless, she had dispatched the woman for now. She doubted the fall would kill another abnormal quirk user. Still, she had other things to deal with and wasting her time here would melt to nothing. The enemy vehicle, why am I even escorting her there? Kyoko asked herself, just why was she helping this seemingly airheaded girl? That's the one, Takitsubo announced as she saw it from here. But that's a military convoy. Jiro commented upon seeing it. Not like it lasted for long, as a massive meltdown are being destroyed it right before they got there. I guess I'll wait, the girl with the quirk stalker ability said, and proceeded to sit down, spectating the flames of what remained of the blown up vehicle. Jiro Kyoko was left speechless. She had no clue what was going on, and even worse, things appeared to be getting weirder with every second that passed. Many more beings violently shot out from all sides inside the building. Thankfully, none of those were near them this time. Deku and Kinohata were on their final clash. Each one of them was about to punch the other without holding back. This move would undoubtedly decide the match. A bright green light emanated next to the girl, making Izuku change his motion to negate it. What the? She exclaimed confused, knowing that it had been one of Yugino's. Are you okay? Midori asked. Yes, thanks. Both of them looked back and through the dark entrance, two green lights were emitted. One was in the form of an orb, similar to an eye while the other looked like a monster-like appendage that ended in claws. As the one who created them came into the light, Saiyai recognized her leader. She had no right eye, and her left arm had been ripped off. A pale green light resided deep within the empty red eye socket. The same was true for the left arm. As if to compensate for the missing limb, a dazzling arm of light was jutting out. It must have been made of a reasonably high energy because it continuously made the sound of a high-voltage current frying a bug in a bug zapper. All of it was created from her power, created by Meltdowner's power. Kinuhata. Two item members were already proven to be traitors, so why not deal with the rest of you while I'm at it? Rebuild the team with true loyal partners. The woman who was once the calculative and stable leader of item was now reduced to a mere shadow of her former self. Her entire personality seemed shattered, and even the words that came out of her mouth fell on a natural. And once I'm through with you, I'll go over Takitubo. No loose ends, huh? Eh? Meltdowner's body twitched uncontrollably, and incomplete cackles exited her every few seconds. If anything, this had become the scene of a horror movie. Sayai backed away a few steps and reassessed her situation. Yugino had lost her mind. That much was clear. And worst of all, she was now after her too. Offense Arbor wouldn't do much against a meltdown or blast. It would go clean through after a short delay of a fraction of a second. Kinohata took a deep breath and accepted her only option. For the time being, I call for a truce, the girl announced with the boy beside her to hear. It's in our best interest to cooperate to get out of here alive. Otherwise, Meltdowner will make us ultra dead. Fine by me. I'll fight alongside you, Kinuhata. Izuku responded with his clenched fist. This would be an unlikely team up. Back outside, Jiro was still looking over what was supposed to be her hostage. She wasn't even sure that this girl was one. Takitsuba received a phone call, and she answered it. About a minute later, it concluded, and seconds later, a message made the phone vibrate. Upon opening it, she prepared herself to speak to her phone. 
This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN allows you to change your IP address, making it harder to track and securing your privacy. In addition to providing a safe passage to the web, you can also expand the reach of your favorite streaming services like Disney+. If you are from the United States, you won't be able to watch any of the MCU and Sony Spider-Man movies, but by switching your location to Japan, you can access them whenever you want. Check out the link in the description to get three extra months when you purchase the 12-month subscription plan that costs $99.99 a year. This deal is for a limited time, and thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. And with that, she turned off her phone and left it on the floor in front of her. Takitsubo then started spinning it, confusing Kyoka even further. The Class 1A student was about to say something, but she was interrupted by the arrival of Todoroki and Kirishima. They were pretty battered. Hello, other strangers, Takitsubo said with a wave as she became aware of the new people in the area. Ochako had caught up with Kendo shortly after getting rid of the hag. They both continued running together, still needing to get out of there. But Uraraka was now more worried as Jinsadi's temperature was through the roof, and she seemed to be suffering because of it. We're almost helped, Jen. Please, hold on! Shizuro Mugino had gone into primal mode as she wailed wildly at the duo facing her. No coherent thoughts were in her mind, just the desire to dissolve the current item to form a new one in its place. Midori and Saiya had figured out a strategy. Mugino's meltdowner had a short delay between command and fire, making it impossible for her to rapid fire. This left a great opportunity to strike for the duo, as after Deku negated the attack, Hinohata would be able to strike. The plan worked the first two times, but Mugino adapted and countered their strategy by solely focusing on her former team member. Izuku didn't let the older woman hurt Saiya as she stepped in and grabbed the Meltdowner monster arm, negating it and then proceeded to punch her right in the face. Meltdowner crashed against the floor, and even more beams were shot out in anger, but these hit nobody. That's it! No more breaths will cross my path and get to live afterward! The livid woman pulled out a case similar to the one she had given Toxtabo earlier, and she crushed it with the grip of her right hand, letting some weird crystals fall on her tongue. You can wait! Those aren't too many quirk crystals! Her worried ex-team member cried out, knowing that this would most likely kill her leader from an overdose. Yugino ignored it and bit into them at full force. She didn't care anymore. The drug's effects were instant as her quirk was exponentially powered up, and an instant later, Meltdowner unleashed an unprecedented amount of beams at the duo. Izuku grabbed the paralyzed Kinohata and began to dodge the Meltdowner attacks, negating some of them before they could make contact with them. But just as it started, it ended. The glowing green light showed dispersed as Shizuru Mugino collapsed onto it the cold floor. Her body had been unable to handle such strain. Seconds later, Ochako and Kendo ran through the darkened entrance and met up with Deku. As that reunion was occurring, Kinohata had gone to check on the body of her ex-leader. Mugino was alive, but just barely. What you tried to do to me was ultra messed up, but I will not end your life. I'll let fate decide what to do with you. And as for me, I'm disbanding the team and leaving with Taktubo. You will not harm either of us, Mugino, the girl whispered to the unconscious lady. Knowing that both Himiko, as well as Frenda, were now gone only made it hard to forgive such a monster. Saya then walked over to the teens nearby and surrendered. There was no point in opposing them any longer. You may hand me in. I will not resist, she told them, but this made Izuku smile. We're not doing that to you. Come with us to the hospital, and we'll talk there, okay? The 12-year-old agreed, and she left with them. Once outside, she reunited with Toxibo and hugged her tightly. She was her only friend left, and thankfully, she was unharmed. Timo Chako also assembled once more. And after making sure everything was all right, they departed to the special hospital in which the Gekuta Face doctor worked. 10,032 let out as she slowly began to regain consciousness once more. The brightness around her made her vision blurry and her right eye sensitive. Jen, are you awake? She heard Ochako ask beside her. Yeah, my head hurts. Jinsani answered and then cried quietly, placing her hand on her forehead. It's okay. You have a high fever. But once it's settled down, I'll bring you home. I promise. Uraka grabbed her sister's hand and then checked her temperature once more. It hadn't gone down even a bit since they arrived. Are the others okay? Jen asked while covering her eyes from the light. Of course they're okay, so don't worry yourself. Rest up, little sis. I'll keep watch. Nailgun caressed her sister's hair and gave her a kiss on the forehead. But what about Dog? Who will take care of him? He's just a... The dazed clone cried out, trying to get up but being too weak to do so. I got that covered too. Momo will look after him while you get better. She understands the situation and wishes for your safe recovery, so rest up, okay? The sooner you get better, the sooner we can go back home. Ochako once more helped Jen, placing her in a more comfortable position. All right, I'll do my best. And sis, 
I'm sorry. Tears were exiting her eyes as she said that. I wasn't strong enough to keep myself safe. And because of that, everyone got hurt. With a big hug, Ochako embraced her younger sister and made sure to let her know that there was no reason to be sorry. Don't apologize. All that matters is that you're safe. Nobody will blame you, Jen. Every single one of them came to see me because they wanted to do so. I didn't force anyone to tag along. We all just want what's best for you. And right now, we're all hoping for you to recover so we can go back to how things were. That's not just our wish, but the wish of the entire Uraraka sisters, too. So don't blow your mind with that, and instead sleep well knowing that we all are rooting for you always. With this, Jinsani hugged her sister back and decided to sleep. In her last drifting moments, she could only smile knowing about all that. She couldn't wait to see them all again. The Electro Master left the room quietly, and once she closed the door, she was approached by her homeroom teacher. What you and your friends did was quite reckless, Aizawa commented. I'm aware. A hint of sadness was present in her response. I'll take any punishment you decide to give me. I won't complain. At that moment, Eraserhead stepped forward and gave her a light chop on the top of her head, confusing her. Next time, tell me about your situation. I'll help not as a hero, but as your teacher. My students come first above anything else. The sleepless hero told her with a warm smile. Uraka hugged Shota after hearing this. She was glad. I will, she replied with a smile. And I'm happy that none of us will be punished. The scarf around the hero began to float ominously, and his hair raised up, his red eyes looking straight down into hers after she had said the words that soon she would come to regret. Whoever said that all of you wouldn't be punished, after all the mess you caused, you'd be lucky not to be expelled. Ochako backed away, terrified. Never before had he been this pissed off. Not even when she accidentally destroyed an Enmaka limousine had he been this mad. Her quirk had also been erased, so she was entirely at his mercy. Until the end of term, all those involved will have to do extra homework assigned by me. Is that fair enough? He asked, not taking his gaze away from her for even an instant. I guess. The Electro Master admitted, a bit triggered by such an annoying punishment. Very well, he said and deactivated his quirk. I do have something else to tell you, Aizawa added. What is it? I wasn't supposed to tell you this yet, but all of Class 1A will soon start their internships, and you already have a request that Principal Nezu approved immediately. Eraser head began explaining, but got interrupted midway through. Internships? And then leaving the dorm? What about Jen? I can't just leave her! After what happened today, there's no way in hell that I'll leave her all by herself! Once more, Ochako had returned to her loud self. Let me finish first. He shot back. His ominous glare was back. Fine, go ahead. The number two hero, Endeavor, was told of the operation your small team made. The operation that caused his son to forfeit at the sports festival. He blames you for what occurred, and because of this, he wants to have you for that week. As for your sister Jinsani, I'll keep a close eye on her throughout your stay at Endeavor's agency. I swear that'll keep her safe. Uraka was conflicted about it all, yet another extracurricular activity so soon, and this one would last for an entire week. Leaving Jen under the care of Aizawa sensei wasn't the worst thing, but she would prefer to be the one there for her. It was true that things could be worse, but at this point, she just wanted to take a break from all the messed up stuff and enjoy her happiness alongside her little sister. Perhaps that was too much to ask for. I'll go. If you promise that you'll look after her, then I have no reason to fight. Nilgun was serious about it. Aizawa was left astonished. This was easier than expected. He had prepared himself mentally to withstand a long whining session accompanied by rage burst. But those weren't here anymore. Ochako Uraraka had not reacted like an obnoxious brat, which spooked him. They talked a bit more, and he then left. It was already night, so he had to go home to rest. Uraraka, on the other hand, sat down in the waiting room until the doctor arrived. I have bad news. The first words that came out of him. There's something wrong with Jen? The now scared girl cried out. She wasn't expecting something like this. That is the case, yes. Whoever captured her installed a virus meant to fry the network from the inside out he whispered, and proceeded to sit next to her. Damn it! If only I'd been faster, then none of this would have happened! Ochako's hand was bleeding as she had clenched it so hard that her fingernails had cut through her palm. The frustration was beginning to eat her alive, and once more, her chest began to hurt. Her heart was starting to accelerate. The doctor quickly treated her hand and tried to up her spirit. It might be risky, but there's a procedure that could save all of them. I'll carry it out if you permit me to do so. I... please tell me my options on this first. I only want what's best for them. Uraka looked at the doctor, trying to be strong. The doctor stood up and began to think of the answer to give. And once ready, 
he kneeled in front of the seated girl. You can leave it be. There's a chance that it fails at its intended purpose, and instead, it is eliminated by the network. The problem with this choice is that if it were to activate fully, all of your remaining sisters would perish. Your other choice is to authorize the procedure I'm offering. I can attempt to crack the virus open and eliminate it. I can't guarantee my success, but I will do everything I can for it to succeed. Your last choice is to eliminate Uraraka 1032, as she is the main host of the virus. With her gone, its effects on the rest would lessen drastically, so sacrificing her would ensure the survival of the rest. The frog-faced doctor concluded and stood up as tears began to escape the Electromaster below him. Those options are awful. I can't gamble my sister's life on chance. And I could never ki- And- <laughs> Put her down to save the rest. Chinsani's my precious little sister. They all are. And I can't allow any more of them to die. I promised them that. In sobs and tears, Nelkin collapsed. She didn't know what to do. The doctor placed his hand on her shoulder and proposed something. You're right. They're all awful in a way. So that's why I'll put my life on the line to save her so the rest can be all right. No matter what, I will eliminate that rampaging virus from her system and bring her back in better health. The procedure will be a success or I will die to ensure it ends up being one. But if you die, then everyone that needs you will... Ochaku sobbed. This was starting to remind her of something. And that's why I will not fail. Many patients need saving, so I cannot perish on the battlefield. Your sister is lost in one of those trenches, and I will bring her back to you in good health. That's a promise. His words made her break into tears. These words were so similar to the ones Izuku had said on that night when everything changed. I got the right to procedure on Jinsani Uraraka. Neil Gunn stated for him to hear. Even in tears, she had to make it happen. Very well. I'll see you on the other side. And with that, he left to start the lengthy procedure on the girl that everyone had saved. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. If you're in the mood with some great storytelling, We the Celestials has you covered. Our We the Celestials My Academia and our Twitter channels retell the story of the namesick anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Now on behalf of We The Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's excellent content production. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We The Celestials, I'd like to extend an invitation to join the team. The only caveat is that we only accept members from 16 years old to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fills your interest by joining the crewman Discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. And if you want more content from me, check out my Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube at Trina Duhart. Well, that's it from us for today's video, so thank you all for watching and have a great day! Hours later, in the middle of the night, as the procedure was still underway, Ochako Uraraka made a long-distance call. I suspect that the events from today were caused by you. And even if they weren't, I know that you were involved somehow. So I'll say this only once. Get near my sisters and I will end you. Try anything again and I will find you. Making you suffer would not be a bad thing. And that also goes for her friends. Touch a hair on any of them and I will deal with you myself. I meant what I said earlier. I never want to see your face again. And to be honest, I also never want to hear another word coming out of your mouth. With that, she hung up. On the other side of the now-ended call sat Mrs. Uraraka. Her daughter had messed everything up. Even dealing with her private contract mercenaries was something that she didn't expect to occur. Her inner fury was contained. She wouldn't be displaying it anytime soon. Still, she knew that the virus had been planted. So if nothing else went off the rails, then the residuals would rain down upon her once more. Soon, all those clones would be dealt with, and this put a smile on her face.